if I had to fight Floyd Mayweather, I'm not going to box with him. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm going to kick him in the balls and I'm going to try and get my friend to hit him with the car. I'm going to figure something else out. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's what we're doing with Gymshark. We're constantly like hacking and trying other things to get around because we can't play that same game. Being an entrepreneur comes down to being a rebel, challenging the status quo, resisting conventional paths to success and taking the road less traveled. But what does it mean to be a rebel? How do they think, act? How do they learn? And when did they realize they were doing their life's work? In this series, I sit down with inspiring entrepreneurs, founders, and makers to hear their stories about building their business from the ground up. This is the life of a rebel. Hey everyone, uh, Harley here, and uh, today I have Noel Mack here, uh, who's been a long time a merchant, but also a friend of, of mine and of Shopify's. Uh, Noel is Gymshark's chief brand officer, and he's joining me today. Noel, before we begin, um, give me the short backstory on how you became Gymshark's chief brand officer and, and how that all happened. So I stole Ben's job. Not many people know this, but ben, ben used to be my boss and was the chief brand officer. And I sat down with him one day and said, listen, man, I think if both of us went to the interview for chief brand officer, I think I know who would get it. And he looked back at me and went, yeah, I think I do too. And then he gave me the job, so I took that off him. Um, but it went it went like this. I, I had a creative agency before this, doing all the stuff I do here now at Gymshark, pretty much. And uh, Ben and his old business partner came along as two young kids with no budget, no idea what they wanted to do. They just knew they wanted to make some content. And it was really creepy because I was used to telling people why they should invest in content. These kids already got it, and I just liked them. So the first ever pieces of content that Gymshark produced were made by me and my guys. And then, you know, we did more and more and more. And it got to a point where Ben said, why don't we create this sort of content machine and influencer marketing, all this kind of stuff in-house at Gymshark. And we do what you guys do in-house. So I came in as the uh, creative director, then brand director. And then, like I said, Ben was chief brand officer. And I thought, man, I need that job. So I took it off him. We, we've all heard the the famous sort of Henry Ford quote, which is, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have said a faster, faster horse. horse. How does that statement resonate for you right now? A lot. There's, there's a there's a there's a shop Shopify interview where I'm quoted as saying that one of your guys Jason was uh, interviewing us and he, he kept sort of he kept really bigging me and Ben up and saying God you guys are so good at this and that and really giving us showing us in compliments right and I said man I said listen we're not great marketeers we're good listeners there's a difference we listen to what the audience say and and we, you know we act on that and in and in that way. You never really feel like you're going out on a limb with the Gymshark community because by and large, they've probably informed you know the decisions that you're making. However, the Henry Ford statement and another person I massively respect is Ricky Gervais. And I don't know, he, he always says, yeah, I don't know where we got it from, but I think the guy's a genius. And he said, to conduct the orchestra, sometimes you have to turn your back on the audience. And I think that's also very true as well. So yes, we're very, very aware of what the community want. We listen to them. I always say, I said to um, the, the, the Vayner Media guys recently on an interview that there's gold in Instagram comments, like brands should spend less time talking to their audience and more time listening to their audience. There's gold in those comments if they just read through in their comments and in their competitors. But there are those moments where you have to go people don't always know what they want sometimes you have to show them what they want so yeah i think i think if it i think if you're an overbearing dictator and you're constantly trying to serve them the new the new big idea it's it, it, i don't think, don't think that's going to go well either i think you have to strike that balance nicely understand what they're saying to you but then also understand that sometimes you're going to have to sort of show them what they want next i think one of the things that i'm always most impressed with is that you have very much blended the definition of who is a customer who is a fan of yours, who is an influencer of yours, who is part of your marketing team, um, and who's just someone who likes to wear your clothing. Um, how do you think about that? I mean, obviously we can get into influencer uh, strategy later on, but 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 that, that almost is not as important to me as, is how do you consider someone um, a fan versus a consumer versus someone who is an extended part of the marketing team? Well, I could, I could, I could draw out a very marketing CMO style diagram of the the ambassadorship triangle, which is like the athletes at the top, and then our customers the next, are the, are the next lower tier after that. But to be honest, that's me sort of backwards translating it into sort of marketing talk. We we use the word family a lot, and we just we just act as such. Like we always say, like if we hadn't been creating Gymshark when we did, we would have been wearing it. We would have been one of the, you know, the fans, the people involved in the community. So we've never really considered ourselves above them for any reason, right? There's a famous, I know you guys love the story about when we moved to Magento and it all went south and the, the whole thing nearly- I love, It's one, one of my favorite stories, <laughs> I can tell you. So yeah. when the whole thing nearly died, Ben sat and wrote like thousands and thousands of apology cards 
and why it happened and here do you know what i'm saying there, there, there was never any there was no well i'm the founder or the ceo or the majority shareholder and that just is what it is and like hiding behind you know press statements or anything like that it was dear tom i'm so sorry about what happened da, 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 ben as though you would to another member of your family do you know what i'm saying like a true conversation peer to peer when we did the world tour we called it a world tour it wasn't a world tour but it was basically myself ben and three athletes we we jumped on a plane, flew in economy, rented the car from Hertz and said, we will be in Times Square at 12 o'clock. Let's hang out. And just just thousands of people descended. That's where the big pop-up stores that you see now all came from. And it was just the most, it was just the most sort of ghetto, throw it together. Fuck it. Let's just do it and see what happens. Kind of, uh, you know, experiential marketing we could do. But all that time we were, we were constantly on the receiving end of all this qual feedback, do you know what I'm saying, and understanding and data, even though you don't realize that's what it is at the time, it sharpens your idea of what Gymshark needs to be. We sharpen this understanding constantly through uh, social media, through hanging out with the audience, through asking questions, through answering questions of what they want from us. And equally, we have a vision of what we want to be to them. And somewhere in the middle of that, there's, there's, a, there's an amazing 100-year brand being built. I think because you've been limited by resources for so long, and certainly in the Shopify story, the same thing, we had to get really creative because we didn't necessarily have a lot of resources. So we had to become very resourceful. And this idea that creativity starts when the constraints get applied mm -hmm. is so important in the early days of any business because there are so many constraints. And I think if you had adopted this company with, you know, a billion dollars in cash in the balance sheet and a massive, you know, sales uh, machine, as opposed to having to build it from scratch, you probably would have had a bigger event in Times Square it probably wouldn't have felt nearly as authentic. 100%, yeah. I mean, we say it's, it's no secret, right? Everybody's seen the news that we just achieved the unicorn status. When we were going through that whole investment process and, and the uh, the potential investors were speaking to me and saying, um, how is it you've, how is it you've, you know, happened across these these innovative marketing strategies and this new way of building brands? And it was like, because we didn't have, we, didn't, we couldn't do it the way everybody else did. Well, I couldn't, I can't go pound for pound against Nike. I will lose that battle. Do you know what I'm saying? I kept saying to those guys, if I had to fight Floyd Mayweather, I'm not going to box with him. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm going to kick him in the balls and I'm going to try and get my friend to hit him with the car. I'm going to figure something else out. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's what we're doing with Gymshark. We're constantly like hacking and trying other things to get around because we can't play that same game. Let's, let's talk quickly about that because a lot of folks that are watching this right now are trying to build their own brand. They're trying to build their own business. And I'd love to ask you, you know, we talk a lot about listening to your audience and helping and, and having them help guide your strategy, your brand, your company. But what advice would you give to someone who doesn't yet have an audience uh, who's just starting a store, you know, on day one? There will be other brands out there doing what you're doing already. It's like, you know, a potential rivals in the future slash uh, very similar things to what you're doing. Hang out in their comments, right? Find out where their community, their customers are getting annoyed at them. And there's, there's, there's opportunity there for sure. I'm not saying you reply right away like, hey, hey, come over to my brand because that's kind of uncool, right? But just that should, that should start to fine tune your understanding of what's, what's, where the gap is in that market. Do you know what I'm saying? So if you can find little nuggets of information amongst there, fulfill that need, it won't be very long until people are saying, hey, I know you, you know, uh, you have a bad experience over there. Have you seen these guys? Um, so I think there's, yeah, I think people start, start businesses too early they start worrying about what their ads say their copy their creative and they just basically they're going out there with a megaphone shouting about what their brand is rather than going out with the megaphone go out and listen and then try and you know slowly address those pain points so we're going to watch a couple of videos uh, right now videos that did you have all produced inside of gymshark and i want to get your reaction to it i want to understand it a little bit better so let, let's play them no problem well, whirlwind of love my darling so yeah, this was, um, that's definitely one of my favorite Black Friday uh, campaigns to date. So some, like we, we've been trying to build up this thing with Black Friday, right? I know in the e-commerce world, in fact, when I spoke at Commerce Plus in New York, uh, Hannah Abaza was interviewing me and there was the screen in front with all the questions. Every single question was about Black Friday. Is it true you guys had X hundred thousand people on your website at once, all this stuff. So every year we know we have to raise the bar when it comes to Black Friday. And with this one, and one Black Friday, you actually turned the site off. Yeah, we did, yeah. Disruption, Harley, disruption. Um, I love, no, I, I love it. But tell me about this video here. Like, this is shot in slow-mo. Like, how did it all work? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so well, the whole, the whole thinking was, how are we going to stand out this year, right? And we thought the idea of seeing your favorite influencers fighting over Gymshark products, you know, tackling each other through the boxes. You had Wrestling Ryan, each other. Exactly. You had Ryan Garcia. 
uh, one of the most influential names in boxing right now, standing head to head with Tatiana Suarez, one of the hottest female UFC fighters, right, arguing over a, a, a Jim Shark hoodie or whatever it was. Um, so first of all, we knew the concept would make people laugh. Second of all, we knew we were building up this reputation in the industry and with the consumers that the Jim Shark site is chaos on Black Friday, right? And we thought, how better to actually bring that than to bring that to life in real time? And we've all seen those videos, the sort of. The, the data behind it was we've all seen those videos where uh, the doors open at Walmart or as they're in the UK. Whatever, and everyone and, just and rushes and pushing yeah, yeah. people aside. Yeah, exactly. People are punching each other in the face for $20 off a TV set, right? And we thought we've all seen those clips go viral. So it stands to reason if we do that with the Gymshark athletes, we'll get a lot of shares and we can go viral online. So, yeah, that's where it came from. I love that. All right, let's, let's show another clip here. Let's roll something else. This is, this is fun, man. I like this. So yeah, what this is about, um, there's a lot of sort of gym shark imposters on social media, uh, pretending to be us for, for, for a plethora of reasons, to be honest. They're either trying to sell knockoff gym shark products, which we, we constantly deal with, but you know, it, like, like you said earlier, Harley, there's a lot of big brands with a lot of money in the war chest that can't stop that from happening, so we can't either. Um, so there's that, but the bigger thing, and it, uh, this, this almost talks to sort of protecting our community, is there are, there are very strange people out there who will pretend to be Gymshark on social media and say, we're interested in making you a Gymshark athlete and ask to send in like photographs of them and measurements and can you send one in your bra and weird things like that. So although it's not us and it has nothing to do with us, we feel we owe our community something, right? To, yeah, we feel responsible to say, you know, make, make sure you don't fall for this. Nobody from Gymshark would ever reach out to you in this way. If it doesn't have a blue tick, it's not coming from us. Um, it's, it, it's alarming. Social media, is a, social media is a great place for brands like us, right? And for content like this and stuff. But there is also some really dark corners of it. And if we can help combat that, then we absolutely should. I love that. All right, let's, let's roll one more. So here's how it went down. One, I wanted to use my student discount code, which was no problem. I just got my code ready earlier in the day to save time. Two, I acted fast. Items are not reserved in your cart. Three, I acted So what happens here is we mixed in the actual campaign content, the, 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 uh, the, the guy giving the uh, news flash that the, uh, the BDE uh, sale has gone live, and then it's Here's some stories of people who've successfully shopped before. So Blaze, who's in the uh, campaign video there, explains how she successfully shopped during the Black Friday period last year. So she says things like, you know, I was logged in, I had my student discount ready, I had da 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 I knew which one I wanted, I'd added it to my cart. Now the reason we do that is because, to put it into sort of bricks and mortar terms, like we mentioned earlier, running into Walmart to get a TV set, we just gave Blaze the, we just, we're giving the customers the map of where the thing they want is, do you know what I'm saying? You guys know better than anyone, right? That much traffic hitting a website at one time is not good for the website. So what we want to try and do is equip the consumers with as much info on how to successfully shop during the Black Friday sale as possible. Um, and it also, it, it, it leads to a better customer experience for them. And it also alleviates pressure on the customer experience teams here, the social guys, you know what I'm saying, all that kind of stuff. Hey guys, is, is student discount turned on or do I need to be logged in? Can Will things get cleared from my car? We try and front load and answer all those questions before that 7 p.m. go live. So by the time you're there, You've got that fastest finger first mentality. They're ready to go. They know what they want. They're logged in. And, you know, their, their chances of getting what they want during the sale period, are, you know, tripled. We have one more, I think, to show. So this is a pretty standard video that we've seen. You've, you've seen so this a million times for sure. Tell, tell us what's going on here. So this was when the, when the pandemic first hit, you had all these people at a loss of, you know, how to train, where to train, what to train. Um, so we turned to our athletes and say, right, what we need from you guys is help the community. They can't get into the gym. So you explaining how to bench press isn't going to work for them anymore. We need you to flood your social media. We need content that we can repost of how people can get a workout in from home because we understand just how much physical health is intrinsically linked to mental health as well, right? And it was a dark time for a lot of people out there. And we had all these super inspirational people, right? some of the biggest fitness influencers in the world with a way to inspire people and help them get a bit of a sweat on from home. And we did that in a, we did that in a ton of different ways, but going back to what we talked about earlier, 
some of that some of that content was some of the best performing content we ever put out right um so the the, the thing you mentioned harley of almost that defeatist attitude of oh it's okay for gymshark they've already got millions of followers so their stuff can go viral this shows that you don't need the high production value right you don't need the you don't need the creative directors you don't need the agencies you don't need the storyboards you just need that great understanding of the pain points of your customer right now and to try and address it and isn't, isn't that the best part of entrepreneurship or, or retail or commerce or brand building is that Again, you don't need to have the most amount of capital, the most amount of resources. You just have to be authentic and resourceful. And what mm -hmm. this video does and what this series of videos does is that it gives value. Uh, the irony of us talking about how you need huge creative budgets to make it, you know, make content resonate. Us, we, we, we changed our name to Home Shark on Twitter. We screenshotted that. We put it on Instagram and we wrote, we've changed our name to Home Shark because some of you guys needed to remind, needed reminding to stay at home because not everybody, everybody was abiding by the rules. And that is our most liked, most engaged piece of content Gymshark has ever put out as a brand. Now, let me go back to, let me go back to what it took to create that, an understanding of the consumers, right? And the current situation they found themselves in. So entered some text on Twitter, screenshot, post, not one camera was involved in the making of our most highly engaged piece of content ever. And I said, I said, and, 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 you know, they saw that, it made them laugh, it resonated with them, they reposted it, they saw what we did, we helped out the NHS here in the UK, and I always, I, I said it in, again in the, in the, the Shopify interview I did with you guy Jason, I stole this thing from the Irish Prime Minister that, let them say of us, when times were at their worst, we were at our best, and that's what I had in my entire, that's what I had in my head the entire time during the pandemic, what can we do to put our values on display to the world, and make them say, when it all went to shit, Jim Sharp were there, and Jim Sharp gave us what we needed. I'm writing that down. When times were at their worst, we were at our best. Yeah. Let them say of us, when times were at their worst, we were at our best. That's something he said when he addressed his first address to the nation. And I absolutely loved it. It resonated with me. I said it on the Jim Shark internal podcast. I said it on the interview with Shopify. And it, it can't have been more true for Jim Shark. The amount of stuff we did during the pandemic, during lockdown. And I know that we made people, you know, CMOs will talk about the LTV of a customer. I'm, if, if you want to put it into those terms, I know that the LTV of a bunch of customers went through the roof. But what I know more than ever, also, the more the way I would put it is we strengthen the family ties between us and the community more than we could have, you know, through any marketing, any content, any traditional stuff we could have done. There is nothing that builds more trust than when things are tough, you showing up in the right way, not showing up in the easy way, in the, but in the right way instead. And mm -hmm. usually the right way costs you more, takes more time, is more challenging than the easy way, but it almost always pays off longer term. And, and the payoff is is you build brands like like Gymshark. Couldn't agree more. So before we, 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 we leave it, I'm, I, I wanna be respectful of your time and, and, and let you get back to work. One thing that, that I think is really important is right now there's, it feels like the world is in need of more inspiration. The world is need, in need of more support and, and, and guidance and help and care. And, and you know, what's one thing that you would say to someone who wants to build something special, wants to build the next Gymshark or the next Shopify? What is something you would say to them today? So a lot of people know the Jim Shark story and are inspired by it now, right? And they they know of they know of Ben Francis, the Wonder Boy entrepreneur, and he's the new Richard Branson and all this stuff. But the one thing I'd say is we're a lot more scared of the next nineteen year old in the garage than we are of the board at Nike or Adidas or Lululemon or any of those guys. We're a lot more scared of that next kid. So you might just be that next kid. I love that. That's so impactful. Thank you so much for spending some time uh, with us, Noel, and uh, congrats on all your continued success. And and thanks for just thanks for being my friend. Thanks for being a friend of Shopify's. And uh, and and I, I love that you you folks never make any small plans, and and you continue to inspire me. That's the reason why all of us at Shopify get up every day is to help more people build the next Gym Sharks, and uh, it's it's amazing. Love it. It wouldn't be Gym Shark without Shopify. Thanks, Harley.